Okay, so we're having a little difficulty with our EPS file. For whatever reason, whenever we bring it into Photoshop, it's it's a clean EPS file. It works great, except it's always filling with white, even though we can't see that white in Illustrator. And my, my uh, suspicion was that that was because it, they were created as strokes or what uh, the vector online program calls borders. And so when I uh, used object and path and outlined the stroke, it still had some artifact information. So to dig into it a little bit deeper, I can open up the layer. I can use the small selection tool, the white arrow in, in Illustrator and click on it and see which layer it is. And then you can use these drop downs and look at how many drop downs there are. There really shouldn't be any. And then at the very end, there's this one little thing that's not turned on, right? And so that's the thing I need to delete. Or maybe that's the thing I need to outline. Strange. Maybe not. So it won't let me delete it. Oh, it did there. Okay, good. Okay, so now this should be pretty basic. Now let me see if that made a, a difference. So I'm going to say save. And if I'm right that that was that little artifact left over from the other program, that now when I bring this EPS into Photoshop, that top rib will be empty and the others will still have white. Sure enough. Okay, so that's the, the artifact. So now I know how to fix it. So I'm going to delete these other failed layers. And we're going to get it right this time. So we go into Illustrator and we have to be pretty diligent with each of these things. I have to dive deep into it in order to. delete just that little artifact up without somehow screwing it up so just repeat the steps i did on the others it does seem like i need to outline it again for whatever reason turn it on outline it under object, path, outline, stroke. And then I can drag it to the trash. This little white fill, that well, didn't work that time. Hmm, what is different about you? All right, one more time. Worked on the others. But not on this one. Hmm. I have another idea. So it doesn't think it's a stroke, but it's definitely showing the stroke. There, just hit delete instead of dragging it to the trash. That worked. All right, so now save it. 
So that is my finished EPS. There are no like weird artifacts stuck to it. So when I bring it in to my 8x10, Try to make it look good, pretending that this black shape is the mat. I can actually move the effects I used on the layer underneath and put them on the new layer. And then delete it. And the only difference is that now the inside also has the cast shadow and the stroke, which I like. It makes it look more, more complex. And I can turn off the background. And I turn off the white background as well. But that's how it would print. I might want to tighten up this uh, drop shadow a little bit. Make it 45 degrees. There we go. I like it when it looks like cut paper. So that's how it's going to print. But in order to save it as a PNG, I want to turn off the background. Click on PNG to the desktop. Always save to the desktop and navigate from there. And then I can close this. Oh, I also do want to save it as a PSD file with all of these options. So just updating it. OK. So let me pull that from the desktop. Both the PSD and the PNG. And that PNG I'm going to put up to PhotoBucket. You can post as many variations as you like, but what I am interested in posting I just I want it to keep improving as I post. So you can see the differences. So the first ones I posted last class were made with the online program. Now I'm going to post what I was able to do using Illustrator and Photoshop. but you still want to post it as a PNG and you still want to post it with an offset of some sort. So it shows up on any kind of background. And then you want to label it. So here's my new one with the empty water now. And working fully as a vector shape that I didn't have to rasterize at all in Photoshop. Okay, so now uh, we're talking about color, how to add color to these. And I know I showed you last class quickly how you could do that within PhotoP. But I want to see what we can do within the vector program as well. I don't want that. And then again, be able to show you the advantages. Oh, I didn't even post the color one. So let's see. But I saved it here. So color is, is something we can put as an, F, an effect, you know, just like anything else in Photoshop. And that's kind of the easy way to do color for a logo. And that's perfectly acceptable. It's a very common way because remember, first and foremost, it should work in black and white. It's only secondary that it should work with, with color. And if it doesn't work as just a black shape, it's not necessarily going to get saved just by being in color. But let's go to the vector program.
and see what we can do. Okay, now that I have saved it as an SVG, right, and I've worked with it, now I can modify things and not worry about it overwriting, right? So I'm going to unlock all of these shapes that are visible. And we're going to play with the color options. So it would be great if I could just select them all. So holding down shift. I can actually draw a box over everything and just select it all, right? And it would be great if I could just change the fill color of everything all at once to something else. Why not green? Let's try it. And it, it does, but it doesn't affect. And so it, you can select everything at once and change the color. But that was just the border, right? What I also want to change is the, or it, that was just the background that didn't account for the strokes of the ribs. So individually, I could color them. I'm going to color the, uh, the X of the eye. I, I want to color that still like it's negative space, so make it white. And then the inside of the ribs, actually each rib, I want to turn off the color and then change the border to a color. And I don't see, let's see, here's a dropper tool. Good. So that can give me the exact same color. So that's good. And then I need to do that for the other ribs as well. So let's try selecting them together turning off the the background, turning on the border, changing the color of the border to what the eyedropper selects. Okay, so clearly using those methods, I'll turn off the grid for the time being, just so you can see it clearly. Looks a little bit like the Starbucks color. So clearly within vector, I can choose a different color for each path. But the color options I have are pretty basic. So let's play around a little bit. So I have the fill, but then I also, if I scroll down, I have opacity and I have shadows. So that means I could have things overlap and have different opacities. And then the shadow is like a drop shadow effect. Make that a pretty strong opacity so you can see it. And then you can actually put in your size of offset here. Your size of drop shadow. So we're going to see this. This kind of drop shadow and and highlighting. I'm going to turn off the inset shadow so it's just a drop shadow. You can see how you can play with some of these features and get some effects just within vector. So you can make your, your logo look a little bit more exciting than just black and white on um, with no effects without ever having to rasterize it because you could save all of that as an SVG. Now we're going to compare that to how we can color within Illustrator. And you get to color it any way you like. So if instead we go to our, our EPS file in Illustrator, open it up, I can similarly, using the large selection tool, select everything. And similarly, pick a color. But notice when I do that, it only gives me a gray value of that color. 